Thank you for joining us here on Psychology of the Unknown. If you want to see more content about true crime, psychology, and the paranormal, be sure to stab that subscribe button. Also be sure to shoot up the like button, burn the notification bell, and leave your manifesto in the comments below. Today we'll be diving into the story of David Berkowitz, also known as the 44 caliber shooter and the son of Sam. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. The son of Sam was born Richard David Falco on June 1st, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York to Elizabeth Broder. His mother grew up in a poor Jewish family and at the time David was born, she was a waitress. In 1936, his mother was married to an Italian-American by the name of Tony Falco, but Falco had left just four years later for another woman. Four years after that, she began a relationship with a married man by the name of Joseph Kleinman and became pregnant three years after that. When the child was born, she chose to give him the surname of Falco, and a few days later, she gave him away. He was eventually adopted by a Jewish-American couple who owned a hardware store by the name of Pearl and Nathan Berkowitz in the Bronx. After they adopted him, they reversed the order of his first and middle names and then changed his last name to Berkowitz, who they raised as an only child. Berkowitz had a troubled childhood and lost interest in learning at an early age, even though he had an above average IQ. After this, he began committing petty larceny crimes and starting fires. Those who knew him in his youth have stated that he was a difficult and spoiled child who bullied others. Pearl eventually died of breast cancer when he was 14 and his relationship with his adopted father became strained after this, mainly due to his hatred for his stepmother. When Berkowitz turned 17 in 1971, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in the infantry in South Korea and even Fort Knox in the U.S. He was honorably discharged in 1974 and then found his birth mother, who disclosed the details of his birth to him, which really disturbed him. Many researchers believe this was the crisis which ignited his bloodlust. Though he stopped communicating with his birth mother, Berkowitz did keep in touch with his half-sister Rosalind and attended Bronx Community College for only a year. Berkowitz claims that his first act of murder was at the age of 22 on Christmas Eve in 1975 when he used a hunting knife to stab two women in Co-op City. One of the alleged victims was 15-year-old Michelle Foreman, who was a sophomore at Truman High School. However, the other victim was an unidentified Hispanic woman. In in July of 1976, Berkowitz began committing a series of murders by using a 44 caliber handgun to kill 18-year-old EMT Donna Loria and her friend 19-year-old nurse Jody Valenti. The two ladies were sitting in Valenti's Oldsmobile while double parked talking. However, when Loria opened the door to leave, she noticed a man quickly approaching the vehicle who produced a pistol from a paper bag and crouched. Bracing his elbow against his knee, he aimed his weapon with both hands and fired, striking Loria, killing her instantly. He then shot at Valenti, striking her in the thigh. He then fired a third bullet, which missed both women entirely. After this, he turned and quickly walked away. Valenti survived, but didn't recognize the man who shot at her and her friend. Another shooting occurred on October 23, 1976, when Berkowitz shot at 20-year-old Citibank security guard Carl De Niro and 18-year-old college student Rosemary Keenan, while the two sat in a parked car in a secluded residential area in Queens. As the two were talking, the windows to the car suddenly exploded, which led to Keenan quickly starting his car and speeding away for help. They didn't realize it at the time, but the bullets that went through the window did actually hit the two. De Niro had a bullet wound to the head, which eventually caused him to need a metal plate to his skull, and Keenan had superficial injury from the broken glass. The police determined the bullets embedded in the car were 44 caliber, which is where he received his original alias as the 44 caliber shooter. On November 27th of the same year, 16-year-old high school student Donna DeMossi and 18-year-old high school student Joanne Lamino were walking home from a movie shortly after midnight and continued talking at the front door to Lamino's Floral Park home when a man dressed in military BDUs approached them and began asking for directions before producing a revolver and shot each of the victims once. After they fell to the ground injured, he then fired multiple other shots before running away. Demasi had been shot in the neck but was not fatal. Lamino was also hit in the neck which left her paraplegic. On January 30th, 1977, 26-year-old secretary Christine Friend and her 30-year-old bartender fiancé John Dell were shot while sitting in Dell's car preparing to drive to a dance after watching the film Rocky. Three bullets penetrated the car and wounded Dell, who drove off in a panic. However, Friend wasn't as lucky, as she was hit twice and died a short time later. 
on March 8th of the same year. On March 8th of the same year, 19-year-old Columbia University student Virginia Voskarichian was walking home from school when she was attacked by an armed man. Out of desperation, she lifted her textbooks to shield herself, but a bullet passed through them and hit her in the head, killing her instantly. At 3 a.m. on April 17th, 20-year-old tow truck operator Alexandra Sau and 18-year-old Valentina Suriani were sitting in Valentina's car in the Bronx when each of them was shot twice. Suriani died at the scene, and Sau died after several hours in the hospital. Police discovered a handwritten letter at the scene of the crime, which read, I am deeply hurt by your calling me a woman hater. I am not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. I am a little brat. When Father Sam gets drunk, he gets mean. He beats his family. Sometimes he ties me up to the back of the house. Other times, he locks me in the garage. Sam loves to drink blood. Go out and kill, commands Father Sam. Behind our house, some rest. Mostly young, raped and slaughtered. Their blood drained. Just bones now. Papa Sam keeps me locked in the attic, too. I can't get out. But I look out the attic window and watch the world go by. I feel like an outsider. I am on a different wavelength than everybody else, programmed to kill. However, to stop me, you must kill me. Attention all police. Shoot me first. Shoot to kill or else. Keep out of my way or you will die. Papa Sam is old now. He needs some blood to preserve his youth. He has had too many heart attacks. Too many heart attacks. Ugh. Me hoot, it hurts, sonny boy. I miss my pretty princess most of all. She's resting in our lady's house, but I'll see her soon. I am the monster, Beelzebub, the chubby behemoth. I love to hunt, prowling the streets looking for fair game. Tasty meat. The women of Queens are prettiest of all. I must be the water they drink. I live for the hunt. My life. Blood for Papa. Mr. Borelli, sir, I don't want to kill any more. No, sir, no more, but I must. Honor thy father. I want to make love to the world. I love people. I don't belong on earth. Return me to Yahoo's, to the people of Queens. I love you, and I want to wish you all a happy Easter. May God bless you in this life and in the next. And for now, I say goodbye and good night. Police, let me haunt you with these words. I'll be back. I'll be back, to be interpreted as bang, 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 bank, bang, ugh, yours in murder, Mr. Monster. On May 30th, 1977, Daily News columnist Jimmy Breslin received a handwritten letter from someone claiming to be the 44 caliber shooter, which read, Hello from the gutters of New York City, which are filled with dog manure, vomit, stale wine, urine, and blood. Hello from the sewers of New York City which swallow up these delicacies when they are washed away by the sweeper trucks. Hello from the cracks on the sidewalks in New York City and from the ants that dwell in these cracks and feed in the dried blood of the dead that has settled into the cracks. JB, I'm just dropping you a line to let you know that I appreciate your interest in those recent and horrendous 44 killings. I also want to tell you that I read your column daily and I find it quite informative. Tell me, Jim. What will you have for July 29th? You can forget about me if you like, because I don't care for publicity. However, you must not forget Donna Loria, and you cannot let the people forget her either. She was a very, very sweet girl, but Sam's a thirsty lad, and he won't let me stop killing until he gets his fill of blood. Mr. Breslin, sir, don't think that because you haven't heard from me for a while that I went to sleep. No, brother, I am still here, like a spirit roaming the night, thirsty, hungry, Seldom stopping to rest, anxious to please Sam. I love my work. Now the void has been filled. Perhaps we shall meet face to face someday. Or perhaps I will be blown away by cops with smoking 38s. Whatever. If I shall be fortunate enough to meet you, I will tell you all about Sam, if you like. And I will introduce you to him. His name is Sam the Terrible. Not knowing what the future holds, I shall say farewell. And I will see you at the next job. Or should I say, you will see my handiwork at the next job. Remember, Miss Loria, thank you. In their blood and from the gutter, Sam's creation, 44, here are some names to help you along. Forward them to the inspector for use by NCIC, the Duke of Death, the Wicked King Wicker, the 22 Disciples of Hell, John Weedles, 
rapist and suffocator of young girls. P.S. Please inform all the detectives working the slang to remain. P.S. J.B. Please inform all the detectives working the case that I wish them the best of luck. Keep them digging. Drive on. Think positive. Get off your butts. Knock on coffins, etc. Upon my capture, I promise to buy all the guys working the case a new pair of shoes if I can get up the money. Son of Sam. On June 26, 1977, 20-year-old mechanics helper Sal Lupo and 17-year-old high school graduate Judy Placido were sitting in Lupo's parked car at 3 a.m. when three gunshots rang out and passed through the vehicle. Lupo had been hit in the right forearm while Placido was hit in the right temple, shoulder, and the back of the neck. Both victims survived their injuries. On July 31st, 1977, 20-year-old secretary Stacy Moskowitz and 20-year-old clothing store salesman Robert Violanti were kissing in Violanti's parked car when a man approached and fired four rounds into the car, hitting both victims in the head. Violanti lost his left eye, and Moskowitz died from her injuries. On August 10th, police arrested Berkowitz after his car had been ticketed in the area the night of the Violanti Moskowitz shooting. After a 30-minute interrogation on August 11th, Berkowitz confessed to the shootings, and during questioning, he claimed that his neighbor's dog, who was possessed by a demon, demanded the blood of a pretty young girl's. The Sam mentioned in this letter was that of his neighbor, Sam Carr. Three separate mental health examinations determined that Berkowitz was competent to stand trial, even though his attorney advised Berkowitz to enter a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. He refused. On May 8, 1978, Berkowitz pled guilty to each of the shootings. On June 12, 1978, he was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison for each murder to be served consecutively. During an interview with famed Mindhunter, FBI profiler John Douglas Berkowitz all but admitted the story of the talking dog was simply an attempt at an insanity defense. He is currently still alive and residing in Shawagong Correctional Facility.